Two guys with great hair. Oh, there you go. There Gavin, you go. how are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm good, thanks. I'm just uh, getting used to being back in, in Toronto. Yes. Yeah. Nice. It's good, good to, good to be back. Feels very, very familiar and looking around and getting that sort of Toronto feel. Yeah, the Bush fan base in Canada. I mean, it's always, it's always been there, you know? It's always great fans. It, it, it's been like the most beautiful thing. I mean, I don't expect it now. And it was a lot more quiet when we arrived today because we used to arrive back in the day. It was like the Beatles that arrived. Yeah, of course. It was well, really fun. An iconic building, and you mentioned just before before we we started rolling the Much Music building, and, and back to those days. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You used to perform in the car park. I, I performed here a number of events, you know, their awards. And I was saying to you, is it better that I've been at both places, or it's been one? I think it's better that I outlasted the Much Music yeah, building. Yeah, yeah. And still for, standing and for, forced my way. Yeah. To your building. Yeah, yeah. Just as iconic, <laughs> if not more. Uh, well, not Gavin, more. congratulations on Loaded, the greatest hits, 1994 to 2023. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, um, I never wanted to do a greatest hits because I didn't want to, um, stop. And it yeah. always felt like it's sort of a, a sort of a sayonara before you go to sort of the Maldives yeah. for that eternal cocktail, <laughs> which of course is a nonsense idea because no one wants to cocktail more than like you know four days in and you're like itching to, to go and do something. Yeah, so. of course. Well, when, you, when you've done it for so long, and um, it, it does. I know what you mean. Like a documentary and a greatest hits, both things feel like the end of a chapter but you don't want to end right well the, i made sure that i'm already seven songs into writing a new record so that i felt didn't feel like creatively bankrupt and just right. here lying to you like sort of the emperor <laughs> with no clothes you know what i mean i came fully dressed so i just brought this record out to celebrate and it's been you know it's been wild is doing these shows because um I always played much more new music as well, and I thought that was really faithful to the old songs. So it wasn't like I, you couldn't come and see a Bush show and uh, they never play any of the songs I know. But I would really push the new stuff because it's really fun to play. And then on this tour, I was like, okay, just think about what this record is. Think about the chronology. And so did it much more kind of from the beginning and the set unfolds like a Broadway play or some. It's just it's weird, and um, I've got this feeling that that's what the fans wanted all along <laughs> i was like did i screw them up a little bit over these years but yeah so it's been really fun for that <clears throat> to to kind of do exactly what they want being complete servitude yeah i mean seven number one singles on there how do you sprinkle them throughout the set you know where do, do you cram them all together and go right that's your lot now they are not respected over and above the other songs it's really weird it's a tough room those songs uh, even ones certain album tracks from the art of survival for example will stand up and fist fight uh, any number one song for the set list position so it's just yeah. like it's it's a it, it's it's fun to do that and to be honest i just think about it people you know there's like 20 songs like people know every song and if they don't know a couple of songs, often I do it to just maybe think about the tempo of the set, just to kind of like up, you know, get it out of rush of adrenaline. Yeah. And it, to me, sometimes it's more important to have a rush of adrenaline than it's like a, a wrong tempo song that they know. Yeah. Now, I could be wrong. I often am, but that's my thinking. We'll get them to comment below and, and, see, and see if you're right. <laughs> but be kind. It. Be nice. Um, Makes the world a better place. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I guess the way you prepare for a live show is a lot different to how it was back in 1994, today. Well, I mean, not really, actually. I mean, it's just sort of a process of warming up everything that you want to use. So that's my body and my voice and yeah. my brain and uh, focusing on stuff. So, I don't know, not really. I mean, definitely how I make music or how I write, but the simple getting ready for a show is just based on the fact that I, I walk around not ready to do a show, so I have to get ready to do a show. So you have a routine and it works? Yeah, I do, I do, I do, I do. It involves a trampoline, a kettle, uh, a bottle of tequila, and a cold Sapporo. It's a good mix. Yeah, it's, it's sort of within those, the Venn diagram of those things. <laughs> um, I have to ask you this, because I know you're a big foodie and you, lo you love to cook. <clears throat> what do you eat when you're on the road? Like, how do you... Well, uh, often poorly, so yeah. it's really challenging. It's tough, right? Well, I just think I'm really basic. Like, I don't care whether it's a roadside stall in, in Thailand or, or a great restaurant in Paris, as long as it's not a wasted meal. Yeah. Just when you're that feeling of, like, the sandwich sucks. I was like, that sandwich sucked. What a waste. So... 
it's a little bit tricky, but here in, 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 in Toronto, I'm really excited. My, I'm going to my friend's restaurant here, Canoe, in, um, in Toronto. So it's really fancy, and that'd be a laugh. But, you know, um, I think eggs are really helpful to just, like, maintain sort of uh, good blood sugar, like egg, boiled eggs and soy sauce and rice wine vinegar, you know. Yes. That's just that's just an easy, yeah. easy fix. And yeah. so, you know, I don't think of it too much. Days off, you know, I'm always on, like, eater, and I'm like, okay, where am I going? Who's cooking? Who's doing what? But, yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't want to yeah. waste a good meal. Nah, it's um, a waste of time. Do you try and consciously see more of the cities that you're in now as opposed to in the beginning when you first started hitting the road? Like, almost you, almost the other way around, I think. Really? It was like at first like, oh man, look, we're in like South Dakota. We should go and see what it looks like. Then you look see what it looks like and you go, we should stay in. We should rest. We've got a big show. <laughs> so, I, I suppose you, you now have, like you just mentioned, friends in a lot of these places that you mm. go to now that, that you can just go, hey. Especially South Dakota. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm back. <laughs> What's up? Crack a barrel. Yeah, so that must be nice. Outback's on me. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a few people. I actually have more people. I know more tennis pros is what I do know. <laughs> across oh, really? The, across the world, yeah, different tennis pros to go and um, take myself completely out of the music world and uh, go sweat on a tennis court. Yeah, nice. <laughs> um, as I was listening to, to the greatest hits and, and some of these incredible songs on there, you know, um, Machine Head, Swallowed, Come Down, um, you know, when you look back at how that music was received uh, in the music world and from critics and, and people that write reviews, and not all of them nice, you could say that for any artist, mm -hmm. what's your advice to new artists out there that maybe look too much into those reviews and album rankings and ratings out of 10 and things like that? Right. Yeah, it's it, it, it's demoralizing if you're young and coming up and you're really proud of what you do and you come from an earnest place of just literally just trying to do your best, whether um, it can be challenging. But I was once given the best advice ever. And I have said this before, so I apologize for anyone who's heard it. But um, when we toured with Bowie, we got friendly. And I was like, one time I wrote him and I said, um, oh, man, it's got this like sucky review. Like... What do you do? What, how do you deal with it yourself? And he just wrote back, outlive your critics. And so it's like, it, it's a really strong thing to say because what that means is like, it, it's just like your ego that gets upset about it. So you should just shut up and it's irrelevant. And like the bottom line is that if you just work hard to do your job as best as you can, you find your way and you find your audience. And uh, I don't think it's nearly as acute as it was when we were beginning. When you got bad reviews, uh, when I was beginning, when I was in this building for Much Music, for example, if you got a bad review, it's like everyone read it. Like, he had read it, cameraman would have read it, be walking in here going, oh, sorry about that review, you know. Yeah. So there's, a, there's a sort of a more communality about it. Now it's much more di um, fragmented. So in a way, if you get a terrible review, there's every chance no one's going to see it. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say it's almost, it's almost, it's a good point because it's almost more about the comment section now and what people are yeah, saying that, on, on that, Twitter that and is, stuff. Yeah, and, 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 and then you take that to, you know, you can take that stuff to heart, but you're really dealing with sort of aggrieved of Ohio or aggrieved of Edmonton. It's just, who are you dealing with? They're anonymous people who, um, it's really easy crit to criticize. It's much, much harder to do something. It's yeah. much harder to do something. Yeah. So I say to all people who get, it, it's normal to be criticized. Criticism is good because it keeps you on your toes and uh, just believe in yourself and go through it. Absolutely. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Nowhere to Go But Everywhere because you just mentioned before you even released Loaded, you'd already written seven or eight songs for mm -hmm. the next project. Mm -hmm. So why was that one on, on Loaded and why wasn't it saved for the next one? Because uh, this one was written, that Nowhere to Go But Everywhere was written because my manager said, oh, we're going to do a greatest hits now. It's all about, you know, keeping going, keeping out there. Okay. Uh, he goes, and we I'd done a song um, 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 by 21 Pilots. I did a cover of a song for a Cirque du Soleil show. Oh, nice. And um, it was a really great song. And um, my manager said, let's put that on the greatest hits. I was like, hold on. So 30 years of greatest hits, we're going to celebrate by um, someone else's songwriting. That's a bit weird. Goes, ah, no one cares. It's all right. Um, just, you know, just it's great. So I thought the only way I can't protest, I can just uh, write a song. Do you know what I mean? I can't, <laughs> yeah. I can't jump up and down and like, you know, just complain. Yeah. I have to say, well, can I 
what about this instead? And so I just set myself the task of um, trying to write a song that stretched across all the, all the, almost all the genres within our rock journey, you know, from the super heavy of now to the, um, you know, super grunge of, of, of the earliest songs. So, um, yeah, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's, it was, it just came to me, that song, and I really based it. I've never done it before, but I based it. I wanted to just get a song that felt like uh, the Queen song when uh, Freddie Mercury was, you know, was really unwell, and he wrote this song, Days of, Days of Our Lives. And that really struck me when I was a kid. I saw it, and I was like, I knew that he was ill. I didn't know what it was. I was too young. But I just knew he wasn't well, and... Um, this song was so sad. Even when I was young, I was like, God, this... And it had something about it. You know, music is so powerful like that. Just chord changes can affect you, like, in your stomach. And when I got a little bit of the piece of that song, um, I was like, oh, man, I'm onto something because I got that feeling. And then I just, for out of nowhere, started singing about my friends. <laughs> it was so weird. And I never would have thought I'd write a song like that. But I, I did. And so it feels like it just galvanizes across all the songs, I hope. What did your friends think? Well, I have a friends group that I grew up, kid, people I grew up with since I was kids, you know, so th uh, three other guys. So I think they were just, you know, they thought it was great and then they just want to make jokes about other things and don't care about <laughs> it. You know, they don't elevate me. They, I get like, they keep you grounded. They keep you very grounded. Yeah, not bad. It's all right. Could have done better. It's a bit long. Yeah. And do the kids keep you grounded as well? Oh, yeah. Well, they keep me out on the road because it's so expensive. Um, <laughs> now, they keep me... Yeah, they keep me vital and real and, and um, uh, correctly ego-free and make it all about them. I could walk in with like a broken leg. They'd be like, sorry about your leg. Where, what? Can I get that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on, <laughs> limp over there. And congratulations on that yeah. piece that uh, you were featured in for Fatherly as well. All right. That's really nice. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. That was fun. You know what's so weird about that is that Fatherly is such a sort of a straightforward concept, traditional. And then I went there and these two excellent stylists with the most flamboyant, really out there, um, metrosexual clothes, which I was like, whoa, like angular and big and architectural. And you could have got swallowed up by those and look really soft. So I just had a real laugh, like flying into it. Let's do it, guys. Look at me. I'm even clapping my fingers, sticking my fingers like a stylist. Yeah, yeah. They were going obsessed, fantastic, obsessed. And like, work it. You got this. Yeah. Let's go. Exactly. But like, it was such a laugh doing it. They were really great guys. And uh, and I think that it was fun because it, I, yeah, I, I was happy with how it came out. It just seemed really fun because, you know, I could have shied away and just like do the simple, oh, just do the black t shirt. But I was like, the weirder the better. I was wearing crazy suits that were like, had like huge Terry Moogler shoulder pads and like out there stuff. It's, it was it. fun. I was thinking it could have gone more dad clothes. Like. Well, something I was expecting a pair <laughs> New of balance, chinos, shoes, chinos, chinos, sketches, all the <laughs> yeah. greats, all yeah. the greats. Hey, it's not a bad look. It's back in now, I think, apparently. Not in my house. Um, another cover. <laughs> Trying to run, a, kind of see the standards right now. I got, <laughs> yeah. I got a clothing line, you know, sea yeah. of sound. Set the example. <laughs> um, another cover that was unloaded, of course, was uh, Come Together. Um, by the Beatles. Which we didn't write. Sadly, we didn't R write. Uh, yeah. An excellent piece of songwriting. You could argue one of the most elevated pieces of songwriting on the album, not written by us. What I wanted track. to ask you, have you heard... Um, <laughs> I would have gone along with it if you said it was your song. You <laughs> some. Have you heard Now and Then, the AI-generated uh, Beatles song yeah. that, that, that they just released? Yes. What yeah. are your thoughts on that? Um, A really a pretty song and like it's so weird isn't it because it's funny you ask that because last night I um, listened to the audience when they were singing Come Down at the end of the set and they were going nuts they've been singing the songs before and like we discussed Nowhere to Go But Everywhere and I think it's a really melodic song but I was I was struck with the reality that this audience of 30 years you can't just put, put that song in the, into their DNA. So with every Beatles song that we know, and we all know them, they're so deep ingrained in our DNA that a new version of them, it's like, oh yeah, I like it, it's completely familiar, I really like it. 
it's not like shutting your eyes to let it be or imagine or helter skelter or any song that you know so that's a crucial thing that like it's so important that people get a chance to uh, have a song seep into their psyche so it's really tricky a brand new beatles song is like an anathema it doesn't it make sense because right. you're like oh is this a band that sounds like the beatles is it like you know you know um yeah the new Zeppelin, you know, because there are new Zeppelins. Yeah. Um, so in that sense, it's really difficult because if it's go up against all the songs, some we know, it fails completely. Is I can't because, remember it. Is it because it's missing the nostalgic? It needs it needs more time to marinate. It misses the history. Yeah. Because we just we think of the Beatles. That, that band was in the sixties or seventies. So for even for me, yeah. I wasn't around for them. So it's like, you know, it's just funny when you present with something new it just it occurred to me last night when they were singing that song i felt bad for all my other songs so i thought oh you new ones never gonna get this kind of love or you might get it in like five years ten years but <laughs> it's really hard yeah. to or and what that does is it just uh, illuminates the magic of that connection with songs they know yeah. so it illuminates how great the beatles are for us and how every song in their pantheon is like part of our dna what makes us even if we don't like them we know them and most people do like them. So yeah, tricky, tricky to be a new Beatles song. That's Absolutely. a lonely, it's a lonely position. It's a lonely perch. Well, they set the bar so high. It's like, you know, yeah. how do you follow the rest of the, right. the catalog? You, you don't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And what are your thoughts on AI specifically and the use of, of technology to, to create music? And is it something well, we need to embrace or is it quite scary? It's everything. You know, it's complete. It's the biggest threat ever. And it's the, the, potentially the biggest tool imaginable. But it's just terrifying because I I tried it, you know, I did sort of, um, I wanted to write, I did like, write a love story that involves a horse and a skiing trip and uh, a deli in New York City written the style of David Bowie, um, Tom Waits and, um, and uh, Jack Kerouac. Sounds like a Hallmark Christmas movie. I'm, well, sure, I'm sure I've I, seen it. You haven't seen that. No, you haven't seen that. And I did it to see what it would come up with. And the, 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 the limitations presently are that it's wild how it has no um, subtext, zero subtext. There's nothing, you know, if you can take a Dylan lyric, is nothing but subtext and, and amazing worlds in every line and all that stuff. Um, and where I, AI is not is anything sentient that's anything that knows nuance. There's no nuance. But, how, oh, look, they've just found nuance. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's imminent. Yeah. So when it's imminent, like I don't, I just don't understand because in theory, you could make it understand why we all love the Beatles so much. Mm -hmm. And then once it's figured out how to, do subtext and it can do 16 subtext it can go back into your dna your 400 dna uh categories that you have or characteristics can be investigated so i mean it's like it's only time before we're all out of a job and uh ai takes over everything i don't know if i Isn't hope it? i don't know if i hope i'll watch this back in like <laughs> seven or, or eight years but I mean, if you think like... about it why where does it end yeah i mean where does it end yeah do you know what i mean it's like I don't know how we'd compete once it gets even more advanced. Yeah. I mean, two years, five years, ten years. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I know. Crazy. That's <laughs> Enjoy your time. Yeah. Well, on that note, Gavin, thank you so much for stopping I'm by. I'm sorry. Bush loaded <laughs> the greatest hits 1994 to 2023. It's out now. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.